My name is Steven Chun with the Guild Hall at SMU. This video tutorial is on basic cloth simulation using UDK version May 2011. The date of this video is June 2011. This tutorial will cover basic cloth simulation in UDK. Cloth physics and simulation includes the simulation of things like fabric, cloth, and deformable surfaces like a sheet of metal. In UDK, the sim is done with PhysX and is represented as weighted vertices attached to a skeletal mesh. These vertices and this mesh are then deformed by the in-game impulse actors and other forces that act upon it. To start, you will need a skeletal mesh asset that has been weighted. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will be using one of the built-in UDK assets. In this case, SCTF Flag Iron Guard. In the content browser, double click on the object to open it in the AM Set Editor. Within this editor, it will help to find and look at the bone structure of your object. To view these things, go up to the View menu and select Show Skeleton, Show Bone Names, and these will show you the names and skeleton structure in your main window. In addition, you can also find the names of the bones in the skeleton tree window. This will give you both the structure as a list as well as the names of the bone. To set up our cloth simulation asset, go to the skeletal mesh tab of the properties window and open it up. Within this tab, you will want to find the force CPU skinning option and check that on. This is important to make the simulation work. Once this is done, you can cl close this tab. Next, go to the Cloth tab and open that up. We will be looking for the Cloth Bones section. Click on the little plus icon to add a new item and add in the name of the bone that has the vertices that you wish to turn into cloth. Make sure you put in the name exactly as written. In this case, our bone name is Flag R. This is all that is necessary to set up a cloth physics simulation. However, there will be other options that we can adjust to affect the simulation. For now, we will preview it so you can see what it looks like. To preview your cloth simulation, click on the Toggle Cloth option. That will start a simple simulation in the preview window. You can hold the W key and the left mouse button to change the direction of, your, of the wind. You can also press W and hold the right mouse button while moving the mouse up and down to change the force of the wind. Now some of the properties that you can adjust in this in the cloth section include cloth thickness, dampening, iterations, and friction. These options will change the properties of the cloth. Thickness will determine how thick the cloth is a, appears to be during the simulation. The cloth stretch and bend stiffness will affect how readily the cloth will bend. Friction determines how much resistance the cloth has to moving against other objects. The other options can also be used to toggle various things, but that is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Once this is set up, you can close the window, and let's put the object into our level. Make sure you have it selected before you close the content browser. As you can see, I have a simple level set up already, so let's right-click and add Skeletal Mesh CTF Flag Guard Mesh, and that should put it in the level. Now double click on the object in the world to open up the Skeletal Mesh Actor properties. Go to Skeletal Mesh Actor, Skeletal Mesh Component, and Cloth. Here we want to be sure to enable Cloth Simulation, that the cloth is awake on startup, and if you wish you can also apply a, some wind to it. Let's do that so we can see something happening. Once these values are set, we can look at the object in the game. Let's do that now. As you can see, the cloth is now moving and acting under wind. Let's exit out and I will show you a few more options. If you do not want an invisible wind to affect it, you can turn off these forces. If you scroll down to the collision channel section, you can toggle what else the cloth will respond to. What these do is beyond the scope of this tutorial. In addition to the in-game properties, there are some other options that we can adjust on the cloth as well. Let's go back into the content browser to see what these are. Once in the content browser, 
open up your object and let's look at these options at the bottom of the cloth section there's a you can turn on cloth tearing which will affect whether or not the cloth tears under force the tear factor determines this resistance to tearing cloth tear reserved is the number of vertices the cloth object can add when tearing Th what this means is that when cloth tears it will create new vertices to simulate the holes in the cloth when this cloth tear reserve runs out no new holes can be created although you can put this at a high number for optimization purposes keep it just low enough to produce a desirable result let's scroll back up and look at the cloth bone section you do not need just one bone if you have an object with multiple cloth aspects to it you can add in multiple bones to simulate multiple sections of cloth just be sure they are weighted properly and that vertices are not shared let's close this tab and go to the cloth advanced section under here there are a couple more advanced options that we can enable let's look at a few of them the cloth special bone sections is used to set certain bones as attachment points to other skeletal meshes the cloth metal turns on the cloth metal simulation which results in a deformable surface similar to metal where the surface will not deform until hit with an actual force the specifics of these various options is beyond the scope of this tutorial but you can play around with them and see additional tutorials for more information this covers basic cloth simulation in UDK thank you for listening